it's, uh, it's been a, as you say, uh, it's been said several times already this morning, it's been a, a, quite a, an unusual week in our nation, hasn't it? Our new Prime Minister and, and then the Queen, we heard she was unwell. And she, I mean, she's just, she's always been there, hasn't she? Always been there. I, 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 okay, I was born in coronation year. Okay, you can work it out. Um, 53. She's been there all the time, hasn't she? And uh, when there's been ups and downs in the nation, there's the Queen and just calm and serene and bringing words of, uh, of encouragement and uh, unity and, and always speaking about her faith. And uh, she's, she's not there now. She's with the Lord. A big, big change. There's been some sort of continuity and security that she's, that she's brought. And you're probably aware, in, in, in many areas of life just now, it's... It's very wobbly, isn't it? It's quite a volatile world. I've got a few, a um, couple of magazines here, the, the week that, that I get. And, uh, you know, the last few weeks, hard times ahead. Britain braces for bleak winter. Britain on strike. And, uh, you know, it's, it's quite wobbly in all kinds of ways in the nation at the moment. And, it, you know, it... it, it Economically, it's, 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 we're being told that uh, the months ahead are going to be hard, difficult for everyone. People are going to struggle, debt and so on. There's, there's still war happening in, it's in Ukraine. It, it, it drags on painfully. And uh, uh, so economically, um, socially, I, I, I just, I don't know if you've spotted a little, sort of an advert on TV at the moment, um, which is a father trying to talk to his teenage daughter. And uh, it's, it, the, 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 it's all, it, I think it, 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 this little snip ends with the fact that I think 30% of teenagers uh, really struggle with anxiety. Should be having fun. And there's anxiety. And folks, this is the culture that we're, that we're in. And the news, of course, the newspapers trade in fear, don't they? In crisis and uh, tragedy and uh, and so on and so forth they, they love those words and so day after day after day these kind of headlines are are bombarding our hearts potentially bombarding our hearts and our, uh, our minds and it's easy to get thrown it's easy to become anxious and fearful isn't it i think quite a lot of people have i've, I've heard saying we don't watch the news anymore it's just too fearful. It's difficult. I'm not going to watch it anymore. Is that you, do you know, the feelings? It's, it's true, isn't it? And um, we, I just want to ask the question this morning. Where's your security? Where is your security? Are you being thrown around on the waves of uncertainty and insecurity that are very much a part of our culture just now? And I'm, I want us to turn to Hebrews chapter 6. And uh, if you have a Bible, I'm jumping out of our series and going to Hebrews 6. Um, by the way, Josh and Becca, welcome back. I've been told not to be embarrassing, okay? <laughs> Husband and wife, hooray, welcome back. Nice to see you. That wasn't too embarrassing, was it? Do they need a cheer? No, 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 that would be embarrassing. Okay, so we're in Hebrews 6. And we are at verse 13. Okay, here we go. And we're talking about God's trustworthiness here. Okay, can I, tr can I trust? Can I trust? When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And he's referring to Genesis 22, where, where God says, and then he adds, by myself, I swear. And it's, you know, it, it's a strong, uh, uh, as it were, it, he'd already made the promise, and then he's kind of underlining it. Abraham, I want you to really know. I want you to be confident. I don't want you wobbling, Abraham. Okay. The circumstances were when he'd just been asked to offer his son. Anyway, so there we are. Let me keep reading. 
He swore by himself. And so afterwards, waited patiently, Abraham received what was promised. People swear by someone greater than themselves. And the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all arguments. That's great, isn't it? Puts an end to all the arguments, all the ifs and the buts and the speculation. Puts an end to it because there's a strong promise and oath. Sounds good, doesn't it? Okay. Um, Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it confirmed it with an oath. And God did this so that by two unchangeable things by which it's impossible for God to lie, a promise and an oath, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. And we have this hope as an anchor for the soul. Firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. It goes right into the presence of God where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. I'm so glad we've heard this morning about rock. I'm going to speak more about rocks a bit later on. But let's start off talking about anchors. Now, I, there's a few, I, I know there's one or two sailors around here. I think I spotted one or two. Do you know, I've got my, um, I've, I was, this is my second Bible over here. Um, no, don't go there. Don't open it. But it, this is, no, no, I'm, it's not on the bookstool, by the way. Uh, but, wow, well, this, this is classic. And, it, you know, it, it, go, it speaks about, Choosing your anchor carefully and, and making sure it's the right size and making sure that it's, that it's accessible and it's there and it's ready. Because when you get into trouble on Braden Water or something, you might want a really good one. Anchors. No seafarer should be without one. Now, you might, you might be interested to know that on a cruise ship, cruise liner, an anchor is probably about 20 foot long. And it, they can weigh between 10 and 20 tons. I mean, we're talking about something really big. Anchors, I hope you got the picture. By the way, anyone here was ever in the boys' brigade? There's always one or two. Hey, there you go. Yes, yeah, so was I. <laughs> uh, it's a Christian organisation for, for young lads. And, and uh, that was based really on, on, on the verse I've just read to you. The motto was sure and steadfast. And there's that hymn that was used to sing. We have an anchor. It's really, really good, really good stuff. Anyway, anchors. I want to talk about anchors for a moment there. Because, you know, in the, in the early church, they were a really important emblem uh, for Christians. Okay, let me read something from a guy called Clement of Alexander. Some of you may have heard him. He's an outstanding teacher in the early church. And he says this, And let our seal be either a dove or a fish or a ship's anchor, a symbol of secure hope. Let this be our symbol, okay? So an anchor, uh, it, it, it's a Christian symbol of, of security, of, of being absolutely, you know, we're not going to be thrown around by the, the, the currents, the waves, the storms, and all the rest of it. My goodness, if ever there was a moment for Christians to find their security in God and live differently to their neighbours, not in fear, not anxious, but being able to walk calmly and well through difficult times, it's now. It's now. Dear church, it's time. It's time for us to find our security in the Lord. It really, really is. For your children's sake, for your neighbor's sake, we're not those thrown around or shouldn't be by all the turmoil in the world around us. And, you know, I think God has great compassion for our generation. I do. Great compassion. We're bombarded. You used to get a sort of, you might get a newspaper once or twice a week or something, and, but now it's social media and headlines flashing into your face all the time. I think God has great compassion for our generation and for you. It's so easy to become anxious and 
fearful. Right? Am I right? It, we all know it's true, don't we? And I think God has great compassion. And today's reading tells us that God wants his family, his children, to, be, to have strong encouragement and to be very secure. That's what it's saying. I want you to be really secure. I don't want you wobbling around like everyone else. I want you to be secure about your life and your future. That's what this, this passage is, is saying. He wants our, our hope to be in him. By, by hope, I mean uh, the, the hope of our lives, our, our tomorrow, our next week, our next year, our eternity, the whole thing. He wants our hope to be secure. And I want to ask you this morning, is your hope secure? And we're going to see how it can be. He wants you to be able to look at your life, and be at peace. What a, what a, what a, what a priceless thing that is in our day and age. What an anchor that is. Now, last week, we looked at the power of the gospel. Do you remember? I had the power of the gospel, the people of the gospel, and the person of the gospel, the Lord Jesus. The power of the gospel. And I'm, you know, I'm really gripped by this at the moment. The power of the gospel. And, uh, I've been reading a bit of um, Martin Luther and just the confidence that he found in personally, the Lord Jesus. You know, I read that verse last week, didn't I? You know, he, he who loved me and gave himself for me. It's that personal deal. The gospel coming to you personally. The power of the gospel, really, really, really important. And we saw in Colossians 1.13, he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness. We were, we were drowning. We were, we, we were floundering. He has rescued us from the domain of darkness and he's brought us into the family, the kingdom of the son he loves, in whom we have redemption. He paid the price, redeemed, paid the price for us. The forgiveness of sin. Oh, it's an astonishing verse. You've been, this is the rescue that you have experienced. When you put your trust in Jesus, if you've never done this before, you can do it this morning. You can. Lord Jesus, I'm just beginning to see that you did this for me. You died for me, for my sin and rottenness. You loved me. I receive you and I put my trust in you. You pray something like that and you move from a wobbly world into a secure kingdom. And then you get baptized. <laughs> it's beautiful. The, folks, this is what it means. The, the, the power of the gospel. It is wonderful. So this morning, I want to move on and talk about the promise of the gospel. The power of the gospel got you out of where you were. You were heading well, the Bible says, you know, one day all, all up before the judge. And we know that's right. You know, we think of evil people in the world and, you, th you know, you think there must be a day of, of accountability, mustn't there? You know, we all think that, don't we? Until we think of ourselves who are, yeah, but I'm, do you know what I'm saying? We know there is going to be a day when those who have done dreadful things to little children and, Every, you know, there's going to be a day of accounting for it. And, and bef you know, before you became a Christian, the, you, the future was uncertain, wobbly, before the judge, and no hope. And when you, but you've been saved from that. You've been, you've been brought out of that. Okay? This is the power of the gospel. The, the promise of the gospel is that you now have a, good, a wonderful future. Ultimately, it's that you go into you go to be with the Lord. You're going to be with Him. You're going to enjoy His presence forever. New heaven, new earth, beautiful with the Lord and those you know and love. All things made new, beautiful, wonderful. You've this is your future, but it begins now. It begins now. We can begin to live in the good of that now because of the anchor that we have. That, that is uh, grounded, as it were, with the Lord. 
That's where you're heading. You have got a wonderful future. The promise of the gospel. And so our Heavenly Father wants us to grow up secure in him what he's planned and promised for us. He wants you and I to be secure that he, he, he's in charge of today and tomorrow and the rest of your days. Really, he is. He wants you to be confident in your Heavenly Father. Just like if you are an earthly father, you want your children, you want them to know the security of a loving dad who's always there for them, don't you? He loves it when we trust him. He really does. He loves it when we trust him. No matter what, we trust him. Vouter and Simone. And so God, this thing with Abraham, God had said to Abraham, Abraham, I've got a journey for you. Go. I've got a journey for you. I'm going to bless you. And through you, all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed. They haven't got any children. Then they have a child and in their old age, and God says, okay, I want you to sacrifice him to me. What? But what about the promise? Trust me. And it was on the back of Abraham daring to trust God that the Lord said, now I want you to be doubly confident. I'm not just going to give you a promise. I'm going to give you an oath along with it. And he promised by the most precious thing in the universe, himself. He committed himself to Abraham and to you by means of the most precious thing in the universe, the Lord Jesus. Isn't that precious? Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? God has gone the extra mile so that you and I can be confident about our future. He's gone the extra mile. He promised. He's promised on an oath. He's promised on the life of his son, the Lord Jesus. He wants you to have confidence. You're getting the message. Are you get, folks, this is so, so important. He wants you to have the confidence that all his plans and promises to you are going to come through. He's going to deliver. He wants to do you good, wants to bless you. It doesn't mean that you won't have problems. It doesn't mean that you won't have challenges. I, um, I can tell you about some challenges in life when things don't go the way quite the way you wanted. But you know, somehow in it all, the glory of God is going to shine. If you will put your trust in him, trust in him and, and hold on. Lord, I don't understand, but I'm trusting you. Do you know what? It's going to shine for the glory of God and there's going to be a well done, good, faithful servant. It's true. That's what the word says. We have this hope as an anchor for our soul. I wonder what your security is. I do wonder, what is your security? Is it your bank balance or what you'd like your bank balance to be? Let's get a bit more in there. Is that where your security is? Of course, it's nice to have a bit there, isn't it? Simone, uh, Valter and Simone, <laughs> they gave it away. Didn't make sense. What's your security in? Your pension? That's an old guy speaking. I wonder what your security is in. Our security, our security, our anchor. It's in, it's in the promises of God and it's, 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 it's in the Lord Jesus, our anchor. Let's read this through again. We have, this is this hope, our future hope, our confidence in, in the promises and the purposes of God in our lives. It's an anchor to us. God, I trust you for today, tomorrow, the rest of my life and eternity. It's an anchor for the soul and it's firm and it's secure. Let's look at those two words for a moment. The first word, or sure and steadfast, the first word means Incapable of moving. It can't move. It is rock solid. Rock solid. Okay? That's the first thing. And then the second word, steadfast, 
it, it, it is, it's, 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 it's not going to disappoint. It's not, it, it, it can be relied on. So that it, it, no movement, no disappointment. That, that's what these two words mean. And for your life, no movement, no disappointment. You can trust God. You've given your life to him. You, you, you've entrusted yourself to him. Lord, I'm yours. You commit each day to you. You commit your decisions to you. You commit your finances to the Lord. You can trust him. You can trust him because we've got an anchor. And it, it's, it, it, it's an anchor that it says here, it's gone through into the holy place. It's gone into heaven. You've got an anchor in heaven and it is connected. It's, t- it's, it's just bound to the Lord, the Lord Jesus. That's what he's speaking about here. So let's just move on. Let's get practical because my time's going. How do we lay hold of our hope? How do we do this? How do we make this real for us? Well, a couple of things I want to just say here. Um, the first thing is to, very practically, it's not profound, meditate on what God says. Think about what God says. Dwell on what God says. If you're only hearing God's word once a week or maybe once a fortnight, depending on how often you feel like it, don't be surprised if you're wobbling around full of fears because there's other voices speaking to you every day, every day, every day. So the first thing, meditate on God's word. Now, one of my f- favorite writers, J.I. Packer, some of you have heard me say this before. He, he said this, the Bible is God's lifeline that we hold on to while the rescue is in progress. I love that, don't you? I love that. So when you're going through a difficult time, oh God, Lord, you are the strength of my life. Lord, you are my rock. In fact, let's, do you know what? Uh, uh, this word rock, it came up when I was preparing and um, I, you know, there, there's hundreds of references to the rock likeness of God, the unchanging one. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock. You're my fortress, my deliverer. Now, just imagine you're wobbling all over the place. Things are going crazy in your life. You wake up in the morning and you, you read that out loud. I love you, Lord. You're my strength. The Lord is my rock. You're my fortress. You're my deliverer. My God is my rock. There it is again. In whom I take refuge. You're my shield. You're the horn of my salvation. You're my stronghold. I think it was Martin Lloyd-Jones says, we need to speak to ourselves more than we listen to ourselves. Did you get that? Speaking to ourselves with words like that. Oh, folks, if you want Monday through Friday not to be wobbling around, please meditate, spend time here. I, 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 oh, I could go. I mean, it, it, keep, come on, turn over. Um, I will praise you, Lord. I will sing the praises of your name because you are, are my rock. Praise be to my rock. And uh, I could give you more. Um, the next psalm, may the, the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. It goes on and on again and again. To you, Lord, I call. You're my rock. The psalmist often talked to God like this when he, when he was feeling quite the opposite. And so should you and I. It makes a difference. It changes things. In you, Lord, I've taken refuge. Be my rock of refuge. There's a lovely another psalm somewhere where it says, lead me to a rock that's higher than I am. Oh, I love that, don't you? Sometimes you feel like that, don't you? Oh, God, I feel overwhelmed. Lead me to a rock. That's, Lord, I, I'm, I need you. I just want to I, 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 please be my rock. Folks, please, I, 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 I beg of you in these wobbly days. You've been called, if you're a Christian, you're called as a disciple to follow Jesus. Please, you need to hear his word day by day. You do. Come and join us on King's Daily. If, every morning, 8 o'clock, go live. It's, it's then available through the day. We're going through Hebrews, actually. Ten minutes. Find a way. For, for the word of God to, to, to touch your life every day before all the other stuff touches your life. So meditating, it, it's, 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 it's as simple as that. It, it's, it's, it's taking hold of God's word, his promises. 
God, I believe you're faithful when you're wobbling in your own heart. Um, so meditate, praying, you know, just being in the pattern of prayer. We, and, and this, I, I make no, no uh, apology for, you know, we were praying yesterday morning, Kings uh, in the coffee shop there, second Saturday prayer. Join us, come and pray with us, come and join us. First Friday, on, join us, join us in your life group. Make sure you're connecting with the family of God in these ways. Otherwise, don't be surprised if you're wobbling around and you're fearful, anxious, and thrown by all the stuff that is going on around you. Okay, so the promise of the gospel, laying hold of this hope that is ours. It's beautiful. And then I'm going to close with this. I come back to the same point I closed with last week. We've had the power of the gospel, the promise of the gospel, the person of the gospel. Here's the thing. You can only hold on to him, to the Lord, because he first laid hold of you. That's, isn't that beautiful? I can't, now, I can't do this with this microphone, but I was going to try and do this. That it's like that. Doing, it's, it's a bit of that. It's a bit of that. It's a two-way grip. And do you know what? His hands are much bigger than mine. It's a two-way grip. You can only hold on because he first took hold of you. That's the gospel. The person of the gospel. The Lord Jesus took hold of you. That's the gospel. It's a beautiful thing. Philippians 3, Paul knew this. Not that I've already obtained or any arrived. I haven't made it, but I press on, listen, to take hold of that for which Christ took hold of me. And I want to say to you this morning, would you make that your heart attitude going into this next week, this next season? I want to take hold of of that for which the Lord has taken hold of me. In other words, I want to live for the purposes of God in my generation. There was a song about that. I'm not going to sing it. I want to serve the purpose. Oh, sorry. oh I just said I wasn't going to. Um, folks, I, I want to urge you to take hold. That I want you to live in the goodness of the things that, that the Lord has prepared for you. Yes, it will involve trusting him, holding on. But folks, there's no... There's no better way to live your life. And it will keep you from the fears and the anxieties that are swirling all around us. You can only hold on to him because he first took hold of you. Isn't that beautiful? That is the gospel. That's what the Lord wants for you. If the band would come up, folks, there are choices to be made here on a daily basis there's choices to be made. Jesus told the story, the wise man, the foolish man, build your house upon the rock, day by day, on the rock. Lord Jesus, I'm trusting you for today. Help me today. I need you today. Lord, thank you that you are holding on to me. We can build our lives on the rock. Or the foolish man built his, his life upon the sand. You know, we used to sing the song, didn't you, when you were in the children's whatever, um, the wise man built his house on the sand. The shift, this, goodness me, it really is sandy. If, you were, if you're building your life on your, your career, your, your savings, but it can, well, you know now, it can, be, it can be gone in a moment. It's sand. You can't build your confidence there. There's choices to make every day. And I want to encourage us this morning that the Lord of all glory the Lord eternal, the Lord, he has taken hold of you and me in his loving kindness. And he has plans for you and me. And like all fathers, he wants his children to be secure in his love. He has taken hold of you. Take hold of him. Whatever it is that's going on in your life just now, take hold of of him. He will never leave you or forsake you. And one day he will bring you home. Is that beautiful?
Lord, I pray for anyone here today who doesn't know you, that today they would make that prayer. Lord, I want you in my life. I want you in my life. Lord, I pray, please, if there's anyone who doesn't know you, others who, who do know you but um, have allowed the swirling stuff of the world around them to crash in on them, I pray that you would you'd come close this morning. You'd come very close. By your spirit, come close. May we know your presence with us. Help us, Lord, to take hold of you. Know you day by day with us in our lives, in Jesus' name. Just one thing I want to say as I close here. I didn't have time to say. Jesus says there is our forerunner. He's already made the journey. He's there in glory. He's in, in heaven. He's the forerunner. The Holy Spirit is the foretaste. And we, we, can, we can enjoy a bit of heaven now by the Holy Spirit. And that is one of the great encouragements the Lord wants for us, his children. A touch of heaven now by the Holy Spirit. So we're going to worship, we're going to sing. Um, and as I say, if you this morning need to put your trust in the Lord Jesus for the first time, please, please, please turn to someone you came with or one of the wonderful welcome team at the back. They'd love to pray with you so that you can have that anchor in your life at this time.